With blackest moss, the flower pots were thickly crusted, one and all. The rusted nails fell from the knots that held the pair to the gable wall. The broken sheds looked sad and strange. Unlifted was the clinking latch, weeded and worn the ancient thatch upon the lonely moated grange. Her tears fell with the Jews at even, her tears fell ere the Jews were dry. She could not look on the sweet heaven, either at morn or even tide. After the flitting of the bats, when the thickest dark did trance the sky, she drew her casement curtain by and glanced athwart the glooming flats. Upon the middle of the night, waking, she heard the night fowl crow. The cock sung out an hour ere light. From the dark fen, the oxen's low came to her, without hope of change. In sleep, she seemed to walk forlorn, till the cold winds woke the grey-eyed morn about the lonely moated grange. About a stone cast from the wall, a sluice with blackened waters slept, and over it many round and small, the clustered marish mosses crept, hard by a poplar shook all way, all silver green with gnarled bark, for leagues no other tree did mark the silver waste of the rounding grey. And ever, when the moon was low, and the shrill winds were up and away, in the white curtain to and fro, she saw the gusty shadow sway, and when the moon was very low, and wild winds bound within their cell, the shadow of the poplar fell upon her bed across her brow. All day within the dreamy house, the doors upon their hinges creaked, Blue fly sung in the pane, the mouse behind the mouldering wainscot shrieked. And from the crevice peered about, old faces glimmered through the walls, old footsteps trod the upper floors, old voices called her from without. The sparrows chirrup on the roof. The slow clock ticking, and the sound which the wooing wind aloof, the poplar made, did all confound her sense. But most she loathed the hour, when the thick motted sunbeam lay, athwart the chambers, and the day, was sloping toward his western bower. 